Hello, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley, author of Disaster Preparedness for EMP Attacks and Solar Storms. Today I want to talk to you about conductive fabric. So there are many types of conductive fabric available that are specifically designed to stop RF energy. So what I thought is these might make uh, great car covers or motorcycle covers or generator covers. So the first thing I did is I went out and um, acquired about 25 different RF fabrics. Um, they all have different consistencies and textures. They're made of different materials. For example, this one um, has a silver thread in it. feels sort of like a cotton or maybe a linen type material. Um, some of them are more metallic feeling. Uh, others are more silky feeling. Um, so they're all different types and they all perform a little bit differently. Um, for example, this one is sort of more of a metallic type and it's, a, it's kind of like a thin, a thin metallic mesh, if you will. Um, vendors will typically provide uh, a data sheet that shows how well they're supposed to perform across frequency, how well they shield. And so I tested these fabrics and what I found is that the data sheets are generally not accurate and um, I'm not sure where the, how they got their data, how the testing was done, but in the test that I conducted, uh, my data was quite a bit different. I think the data in general provided by the vendors is a bit optimistic. They provide uh, the bag, the materials typically provide less shielding than what the data sheets uh, suggest. Uh, but with that said, there's a real use, I think, for this type of cloth. Um, in particular, if you have, let's say, a generator that you maybe keep in your garage and you're worried about what an EMP might do to it, you could create a very simple tarp or cover of some sort um, to drape over your generator. And indeed, if you pick the right cloth, um, you could protect that generator from damage. Um, these cloths typically can provide up to about 40 to 50 dB of shielding, which is actually quite good. Um, so, I think in general there's a real market for these, these products. The key is to find one that performs well and also has all the characteristics you want. So, for example, this one that I was just holding, this very thin one here, um, while it's thin and it's easy to see through, it, it doesn't feel particularly durable. I think it would get snagged very easily. Um, it's also made, this particular one has some nickel in it, and many people have allergies to nickel. So you might not would want to handle it, it might give you a rash. Um, and finally, over time, that the silver and nickel that's in this might actually cause some discoloration under things that it was sitting on. So that wouldn't be an ideal choice, I think, especially for something that might sit outdoors. Let's say you're making a car cover. Um, so I went through these various products, uh, again, about 25 different ones, and I looked at them in terms of what are they made from, how rugged are they, in other words, will they be durable enough to survive for a number of years, how easy are they to work with, some of them are very uh, inflexible and difficult to sort of drape over things. Um, what, what the materials are, again, you don't want to have nickel, maybe not even silver since it can tarnish and discolor over time. And so it's sort of all of those metrics inside to come down with what I thought were the best two or three materials that you might use for this application. And I'll talk about the ones ultimately that I adopted as well as some of the tests that I did uh, here in just a moment. Okay, so let's first talk about how you test these cloths. So you can't just wrap your cell phone or something like that. You need a little more controlled experiment. So I did a typical shielding experiment measurement where I had a signal generator, a high power amplifier, and a broadband antenna. And then I transmitted that energy towards the spectrum analyzer. And what I did is I varied the frequency of the generator, I measured what the shielding was, I would drape the analyzer in different cloths, and measure what the shielding effectiveness was of that cloth. I tried to be as uniform as possible between one sample and the next. They were all the same size, draped the same way, so that I could get a, a very fair comparison in terms of how they shielded for the frequencies of interest for an EMP. So that's sort of my technique of testing. It, you could probably improve on it a little bit, but it's much better than you know, just sort of qualitatively testing by wrapping a radio or something like that. So by going through this testing, I was able to, to uh, characterize the cloths and tell which ones perform the best for our frequencies of interest. Okay, now that I talked about the basic characterization of the cloth, I want to talk about the second phase of testing. The second phase is to take the cloth and actually make a conductive car cover out of it. Um, and then take it outdoors, repeat the same experiment with the spectrum analyzer inside the car, and show how the signal level um, is attenuated based on this car cover. So that data um, and that experiment will be talked about next. Let me just say that I concluded from this early testing, the testing here in the lab, that there were really three materials that seemed to stand out. Um, again, I tested about 25, and while many of them make claims of great shielding, some of them really underperformed the data that's provided with the cloth. So the three that I like, there's two of them that are 
made out of a, a stainless steel inside the cloth. One of them is gray. Uh, and it feels kind of like a lightweight denim. Uh, you certainly wouldn't know that there's metal inside the cloth just by feeling of it. One side is conductive, so you could ground it. The other side is not conductive. It feels more like a, a standard cotton. Um, this did very well. The other one that this is actually my favorite right now is this slightly green cloth. It's a, a slightly softer cloth. Also feels uh, very much like a denim or a khaki maybe. Both sides of it is slightly conductive, so it also can be grounded fairly well. Um, so I like this one. It seems very uh, durable and easy to work with. It basically has the feeling, like I said, of a lightweight khaki or something. I think it would uh, withstand, you know, being used for a car cover. It wouldn't fray or, or pull apart or get snagged very easily. So I think it's a, a good product. I like the fact that both of these use stainless steels as their fiber because then you don't have to worry about any discoloration or any allergies or those sorts of things. So this is the second one that, that I thought was quite good. And the third one actually uses a silver thread, but it doesn't use any nickel, which I like. I don't like the nickel. And it has sort of a, of a sheen to it. It's a little softer feeling. I think it's meant for clothing. Um, one side, again, is conductive for easy grounding. The other side is not. Um, and it is also, uh, I think, quite a good material. Now, I probably wouldn't recommend this over the other two. It, it performs about the same as the other two. Um, the reason I might not recommend it is that, you know, putting silver in contact with things, I'm not sure in the long run if it got wet and exposed to any kind of moisture, you would probably end up with some discoloration and maybe even loss of shielding effectiveness. So rather than take that risk, I think I would probably say, since it didn't perform really any better than the other two, I would probably delegate this to being a, a third choice and go with one of those two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make car covers out of both of those two materials. Both of them use stainless steel threads. And I'm going to conduct some testing to see which one performs better and show you how they should be grounded or, or not grounded, as the case may be, and how that might affect the shielding effectiveness of it. During this final phase of testing, I'm going to conduct a full-scale test of a car cover placed over a 2016 Honda Accord. So I've set up my signal generator, my amplifier, and my broadband antenna to transmit the RF energy. Then I've placed a spectrum analyzer inside of my car with the car cover placed over the top. I've actually created two different car covers out of two different materials, and I'll measure what the shielding effectiveness is of each across the frequencies of interest for an EMP. This should allow me to determine the optimal shielding configuration for using the car covers and which material would be best. Okay, so after a hot summer afternoon of testing, um, I managed to measure the shielding effectiveness of both the green cover and the gray cover. Both of these use stainless steel fibers. I would have expected that their performance would be similar, and indeed that's the way it ended up. I think either one of them would work fine as a car cover. They both provide about 97 to 99% shielding across the frequencies of interest, which I think is adequate for a car. Um, I prefer the green one of the two. Uh, it's a little bit less expensive, and it also, frankly, is a little more durable. It feels like it would last a little longer than the, than the gray one. Um, so that would be my material of choice. Um, I think if you make a car cover out of that, and you ensure that it makes contact uh, with the ground around the car, I think it would all but guarantee that the car would indeed survive an EMP attack. When you order RF shielding cloth, it's almost always sold by the linear foot. So you end up with some default width. In this case, it's about 59 inches wide. And then you buy a given number of feet. So if you want something 20 feet long, you buy something 20 feet by 59 inches. So the dilemma with that is if you're trying to cover something large, like a car, 59 inches isn't wide enough to go over the car sideways. Um, so what you have to do is you have to stitch together a few of these panels or strips. Typically, to cover most cars, you'd have to have it three wide. So you'd sew one strip, to the next strip, to the next strip, and you'd buy whatever length you wanted to get it long enough to go over the car. It's not difficult to do. Um, it's, this basically sews like a regular cloth, so any kind of regular sewing machine would work. Um, so in terms of creating the, the panel itself, the large car cover, uh, it wouldn't be difficult to do, but it would take some time um, because, you know, this thing might be 20 or 25 feet long, and so, it would, you know, you'd have to feed it through the, the sewing machine and get them sewn together. I also recommend that you put a small hem around the bottom where you fold it up a couple and put like a one inch hem. That way it'll keep it from fraying along the edges if it scrubs on the ground. Um, this particular cloth is 
is conductive on both sides, so it'll make contact with the ground and ground the cloth uh, very well, regardless of which way you flip it, which is one reason why I like it. So anyway, if you if you do purchase this cloth, understand that if you're going to make a car cover, or even a motorcycle cover, you probably have to have more than one width of this. You probably need maybe two or three. If you have a really big car, an escalator, something you might need four. Um, so you'll see that on the website, the details of how to order the number of strips and then what length you want each strip to be. Um, just as a courtesy, I offer, um, I, ha I have a seamstress here, basically it's a car upholstery shop, that will sew them for you, um, and it costs a couple hundred dollars to have that done. But in my experience, sometimes it's, it's better to pay a little money than to have to have the hassle of doing something like that. So if you want me to have it sewn, um, that's fine. Just be sure and add that when you add it to the cart. Um, but if you prefer to do your own and, and sew your own, that's great. It's like I said, it's not a difficult job. Um, you just have to, you know, sew these panels together lengthwise and then put some kind of a hammer on the outside. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's the way you'd sort of put these together to make a good cover.